Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the cast for Warrior, an amazing TV series presented by Cinemax. It's uh, growing fabulously. It's on its second season. We have a bunch of the cast members here. They're lovely as can be. So we were here a few minutes before, and that's why everybody's giggling because they were chatting about their family and lives and things like that. If you watch Warrior, you'll know you're probably geeking out right now. But if you don't watch Warrior, you need to watch it. I'm going to start with you guys. I'm going to present each one of you. Don't be offended if you're not going first. Okay, this is just basically <laughs> random uh, mental thoughts. I'm going to start with, let's see, let's see who we're going to start with. Let's start with Olivia because me and Olivia, you know, had a chat already. Olivia, you were on my show last week, I think, twice. <laughs> we had to get everything fine-tuned for the for Spoiler Magazine and for Comic-Con Radio. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I, I hope you got what you needed because I was so dead after stunts when we spoke last week. It turned out phenomenal. What more can I want? And I want everybody that's watching right now to know that your solo interview releases this Friday on Comic-Con Radio. It's all about Warrior, her experiences. So Olivia, mums the word, told this Friday. And fans out there, it's going to be worth it. <laughs> okay. So next, we have Dustin Nguyen. Dustin you are a legend in the business. I remember watching you on this really cool show called 21 Jump Street. What an amazing series. And now you're on Warrior. You're not just acting, you're directing, you're starring in it. It must be so fun. How is the experience for you? Thank you. Even a cooler show. Yes. Even a cooler show. <laughs> I'm just being cool because I'm on a cool show. So. There you go. <laughs> you're on a cool show. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, it's it's great to, to you know to meet you, Galaxy, and it's great, of course, to see all my my castmate, my warrior family. Really miss them, and uh, just happy to be here. Thank you for the kind words, Dustin. Back at you, brother. Earlier, all of you were chit chatting and saying all <laughs> sorts of stuff, and the second we started recording, it's just quiet. <laughs> well, yeah, now, now you know you, we're like nervous now, you know. We don't we don't want to take up too, too, we don't want to be. We don't want to be that guy that just keeps talking, you know, keeps talking, and everyone else can't get in. And you know, a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're just too nice. We're too nice. This cast is too nice. <laughs> it's probably so surreal for everyone out there to see all of you together. And I host and moderate a tremendous amount of cast panels, cast interviews, group interviews, solo interviews, etc. And you guys are very nice. Chen, you're right. You guys are very nice, very respectful to each other. So with that said, next we have the amazing Diane Doan. She plays my Ling. Diane, welcome to Comic-Con Radio. Thank you for coming on the show. How's your experience with Warrior? Oh, it was, it was incredible. I mean, I feel like it was a bunch of kids shipped off to Cape Town and we spent two years together and you know, we really grew as a family. So that whole experience is one, I think that will carry on with us, you know, to future jobs. But I just want to thank you for kind of reuniting all of us because we haven't seen each other in a long time. So thanks, Galaxy. It is my pleasure, Diane. So next, everybody's listening to whose name I'm going to call. <laughs> yeah, well, my heart is like kind of nervous, you know, it's like, are you going to be called? <laughs> We're going to go to Tom Weston Jones. Now, Tom plays Richard Lee, a very cool cop with amazing morals and amazing etiquette. What a great character on the series. Tom, how is it being on the series? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, thank you, Galaxy. Love your intro. But yeah, um, amazing. Like, just as Diane said, I, I miss everybody. Like, Massively, and I mean, you know, these things. I'm, I'm, I'm growing quite used to seeing people through a screen a little bit, but it's this is actually <laughs> quite overwhelming seeing everybody because it has genuinely. But when did we do the last one? We had like a communal. With Langley's one. birthday. That was like how long? About six months ago or something. Months, months ago. Summertime. Yeah, yeah. really yeah. long time. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it. Uh, the haircuts are the the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest, biggest thing. They're great. Or the lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so good. Um, there's certain people, like I, 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 I miss Cape Town um, and messing around on set hugely. Uh, but yeah. So the whole series was shot in Cape Town. What an experience it must have been. Yeah, massively. Yeah, the, the place is 
amazing and the sets themselves were just unbelievably beautiful in detail but the city is uh, I've, I've worked there in the past um but it did really feel sometimes like we were kind of released into it <laughs> a little bit <laughs> there was so much to do and experience and yeah we had a lot of fun in our private time <laughs> not in that way. Not in that way. <laughs> you guys so are shameful. giggling. It must have been an amazing experience. My no, phrasing was pretty terrible. Go ahead, share your experience. <laughs> your phrasing reminded me of a, a a story that oh, I don't think I should tell it on Comic. Go Comic. ahead, go ahead, come on, share. Why don't you bring it Do up. You Why that... don't you bring it up? Well, I I know because it it popped in my head and. Do you remember that place we would all go to for massages? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is getting uh, a little dark. Uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not like, yeah, yeah. Oh, they weren't yeah. more normal massages. Oh, okay, maybe I shouldn't name it so much. I think we <laughs> should let everyone just finish that story in their heads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, okay, we'll move on. We'll move on. Yeah, <laughs> you want to finish the massage stories? Well, <laughs> if you guys want, you can share it with me later. Uh, if you don't, it's okay, but I'd rather you do share it with me. Next, we're going to go to Joanna Vanderham. She plays Penelope Blake on the series. A very important character. You know, if people haven't watched Warrior, yes, it's about the Tong Wars in San Francisco, but the show is split into so many different parts. I think it's split into about three or four parts. And her and her crew, which I say her crew, which was the mayor and her sister and, and everybody in her circles is such an important part of the series. So how is Warrior for you? How is the dynamic of working with everyone? That's actually really interesting. I was thinking about that just earlier today that like we all get on so well and there were days when we would like like I would, I would not, I would go days and days and days without seeing anyone like on set, and then obviously because we were like shipped off to Cape Town together, we would like hang out when we could, and then there was a part of filming called double banking, which is basically where you film like more episodes, you film like two or three episodes at the same time. It was it was four at the same time, right, guys? Oh yeah. And yeah. so mm -hmm. it's it suddenly went from like loads of free time, loads of massages. Uh, to like all of us working all the time and like I, I don't know about you guys but I feel like the actors were like ready we were like okay time to step up you know it meant that we just had like a, a normal filming day you were in kind of all the time but like the rest of the crew were working like double the amount like the makeup department and like everyone just had to be like oh it just must have been exhausting and I think we all felt like we needed to like step up and like be the energy that the crew needed. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, I feel like there was kind of a period where I felt like I was, I didn't see everyone on set, and then there was a period where everyone was in all the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I hardly saw you and Tom. You know, because our, our story. But that's because I was actually that those pickup shots. But with without those pickup shots, I probably wouldn't have seen you guys at all on set. I think there so I actively, I actively was just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> there was only like a handful of like um like really big crowd scenes weren't there there was like that massive fight scene in uh well, fight sequence bunch of scenes in season one which i think mm -hmm. had most people in it oh uh, yeah oh yeah in the like the tournament yeah exactly yeah the tournament mm -hmm. um, other than that i don't think that i don't think there was anything else I I it could... would mainly be like it would be like if we were if someone's scene was happening like afterwards and someone was ready early they would like go and mm. be in the green room or like sitting watching. You just good see experience. you guys at the trailers. I would just see you guys at the trailers because I the only person I have my storyline was with is Jason. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> like my character can't speak English. I can't talk to half of you guys in the story. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything that you all are sharing. It's so exciting and fun. And I hope everybody out there that's listening loves everything so far here on Comic-Con Radio. It's the Warrior uh, cast interview with yours truly, Galaxy, and the wonderful cast of Warrior again. 
I have to introduce this next gentleman. It's Dean Jagger. Dean plays Dan Leary, a tough dude, the people's person, the other 25% of the series. The bad man. If you haven't seen Warrior, (laughs) you're going to not know what I'm talking about. But if you have seen Warrior, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Dean is one tough person. He strikes fear in everyone. Dean, so I know, you know, you're an actor, but uh, are you kind of like this in real life? (laughs) No. And these guys will be able to answer that immediately. I would say especially Olivia, because she's always messing with me, trying to embarrass me. You're welcome. Play pranks on me. So I'm completely the opposite. I'd like to think anyways. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just so chill, mate. Well, you'd fool me because I believe in you, man. I believe that you're this Thank guy, you. but I know you're not, okay? I know you're not. Uh, and the fans probably believe it too. You know, the fans out there, they invest a lot of time in shows like this and they really believe in it. And it's so surreal hearing some of oh. your accents. I don't know if all of you experienced conventions yet for Warrior. I know this year, because of what's going on, you probably haven't went to any conventions. But I'm hoping next year you guys get to go and you get <laughs> to see the fans oh. in person and let them show you the love they have for Warrior. So with that said... Um, I'm going to skip Young June right now. I'm going to save him for last. But this next gentleman right now, his name is Chen Tang. He plays Hong. Chen is the advocate for Warrior. What a cool <laughs> dude Chen is. He promotes Ooh, Warrior. That's like there's no tomorrow. Chen, brother, you've been on my show hey, before. Galaxy. Good to be back. What's man. up? Thanks How is Warrior for you? Let the fans out there in the Comic-Con radio universe know your feelings. I don't know, we we all are, man. We, we this this whole family, and actually, all, all, all the everybody from the top down, and you know, we even even on something like Facebook, there's like a fan group, and a lot of the background artists, like they're such huge fans of the show, they promote it like crazy. I've never no. seen. I didn't uh, know that. Project. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah, know like there's they, a petition for Make Warrior season three? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. About, yeah. yeah that, that, that one, I mean, because like everybody just, just listen, like the energy on the show and, and entering it on the second season. I, unfortunately, I didn't get to meet these lovely people on the first season, but entering it on the second season, I've never been with something that was just like family immediately. And um, it was one of the great experiences of my life. So I, I feel very, very fortunate. And so I think... You know, it's, it just makes it really easy to to just sort of promote the show and and really show the show love when you when you love something that much. You know, I hope the petition that's out there is highly successful and gets a ton of support. There are shows out there that had petitions and they were extremely successful. There's been shows that's been canceled and resurrected because of these petitions. So the power of the fan is mighty. Yep. Just always remember that. The power of the fan is mighty because the fans love with their hearts. And today, ladies and gems, again, thank you for coming on Comic-Con Radio. This is Galaxy with the amazing cast of Warrior. If you haven't seen Warrior... You need to go see Warrior. You need to go and tune in. You need to go every Friday on Cinemax and watch the TV series. The sets are amazing. The storyline is amazing. It's created by Bruce Lee. Come on. Bruce Lee is who created this series, basically, if you want to put it that way. But uh, it's touched by a lot of amazing people, and you need to see it. But... We got to go to this person. Introducing the final cast member is Mr. Young June, uh, Jason Tobin. Here at Comic-Con Radio, we have a bunch of staff members. And every time we see Warrior, (laughs) we all get nervous because we don't know what he's going to do. So, Jason, explain your experience on the show for us. Hey, first of all, Galaxy, thank you so much for um, hosting this. Um, It's such a treat. It's so wonderful to see, you know, my castmates, but I have to tell you as wonderful as they are, I'm extremely disappointed in them because they did not tell me about this massage place. And now <laughs> I'm like, what you, did you, I you, miss? We, we, made a, we made a pact not to tell you. <laughs> oh, you like you mofos. and Gary would go. This is what happened when you, you, you on screen there. a lot. You've been there, the rest of us, you, you took all really? the screen time. 
Yeah, you mean <laughs> you were so busy filming, man. We just had to turn it down. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I miss you guys so much. And I'm fibbing, of course. I did go to that massage place. And I <laughs> <laughs> so, let me just say, it was like you know, young dude just rocking up to that place. Hey, I get a foot massage, please. Um, no, it's all good. It's all good. This has been such a wonderful, wonderful experience. And um, uh, I mean, I, I have to say, when uh, co- well, I mean, 2020 is such a crazy year, right? But um, the fact that season two came out and the fact that the fans are really responding to it has really like lifted my spirits and I'm sure, you know, the rest of the cast too. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, what's, what's the thing I'm looking for? Um, I'm, I'm just deeply in love with the character, deeply in love with the show, the, the story and, and the family that, that we created. So yeah, I feel truly um, fortunate and grateful. Thank you, Jason, for sharing that with us. I really want to know more about that massage story. (laughs) If you don't feel comfortable sharing it today, I got to get you or one of you guys on the show. (laughs) When you have an amazing cast together like this, it's so good to allow them to chat amongst each other and share specific details, little secrets, and other things that's happened on set. Cast members, take it over and let's go. Well, gosh, now you got us thinking about it now. You can't can't force these things, you know? I mean, I actually just finished watching season two because um, Ben and I wanted to watch it together and I was away. And so I've actually only just finished and it's so good. It's so good. And so like, I have like a real, I'm just like so excited about it. And obviously we can't give any spoilers away or anything, but it's, you know, at the time when all the producers were like, guys, everything that we've brought to season one has been elevated in season two. And like, every time they would watch an episode cut, being cut together, they'd be like, oh, guys, like, mm-hmm. it looks amazing. And like, it really is that, like it's it's taken every all the good stuff from season one and just like completely run with it. And, and I, I feel like everything's like fitted into place, like so slick and so, like, there's just, it's just, yeah, I feel like it's it's um, even more exciting than season one. Turned up mm. to eleven. Yeah. Turned up yep. to eleven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's Absolutely. strange because you know, like like you mentioned before, Joanne, we were we were doing double banging and and shooting so many episodes at one time, and we were just so everything was just just crazy. I mean, in a good way, meaning we were so uh, busy with the work, and it was so segmented. And so you didn't, you know, you didn't really get a sense of how things were going to sort of come together. You know, I mean, you, you never do. You never do anyway uh, as an actor. But when you do in one episode and, you know, the next one, the next one, you you got a little bit of time to just kind of feel everything, at least for me. But when you what we did in the second season, there was so many things going on that honestly, for me, it was just like I had no idea how anything was going to fit together in the end. I mean, you, you know, it will. But so to, yeah, to sit- that's really like. Right especially like the look of like Penny and her world compared with like a toy, for example, you're like, how are we in the same show? Mm. But then <laughs> like, it looks really good. Like it makes complete sense. You just, yeah. you just buy it. Yeah. When you see, when you see the, you know, you sit down and watch the, the second season for the first time or just, you know, it was one of the rare times where I would just kind of really moved by by what I was watching yeah because we know the script and, and everything and yeah but I think for me because everything was so segmented and fragmented that when I watched um, season two it was one of those rare experiences where I felt I, I, I think I felt what the audience would feel you know not uh, mm. so yeah I were I, I remember being awed by how relaxed and great everybody was when they came back you know, for season two. I really think that everyone just owned it. And it's not surprising because, you know, we've got a group of talented, talented actors, but I were all by that the most. And then that, you know, everyone's conflicts grew and then the town became smaller, which were an amazing thing to see in season two. I want to say small, I mean bigger because everyone's conflict was so huge, you know what I mean? And it made everything smaller. So I, I just, I were bowled over by it, seriously, season oh, two. Um, and the new additions as well, like Shannon, everybody just Absolutely. running with it, like really, really just hit the Absolutely. ground running. Everybody did. Yeah. Yeah. Well put. It was really fun for me. Like I said, you know, 
you guys had a whole season under your belts together. And I felt, you know, we sort of left with, with, with all of us who came in in the second season. I think it was just like, first off, like, it was really intimidating at first because I was like, man, everybody is like, I remember getting in that van for the first day and everybody's like, ah, you know, all this. And I'm just sitting there in the back like this and just sort of like, <laughs> you know, just taking it all in. And, and, but yeah, it was, it was easy to work with you guys. Like I, 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 I tell this to, to people all the time when we were um, like all sitting down for like lunch in the tents back when we could have lunch in the tents, you know, um, <laughs> pre-COVID. But I, I just remember just being in awe of all of you guys of how much you guys clearly cared about the craft and being an actor, like doing great work. Because you know, usually, but you know, but sometimes you would just cut up. But like a lot of the times, you guys were talking about like, yeah, you know, the scene. I remember Hoon Hoon Lee he was just been like. You know this 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 suit this jacket doesn't work because I can't hold a pistol and doesn't make any sense for our character and let's talk about this let's talk about that and I was just like when are you ever gonna how how collaborative of a of a of a of an amazing set this is how how collaborative a cast this all is I think it's, that's like it's, a it's really beautiful. good observation actually like the the we all we all everybody included took the job really seriously but mm. never ourselves like we yeah made it like a really positive working environment because we were willing to turn up and have a good time whilst also working really damn hard so it was like a good mm. cocktail i mean in uh, before filming for season one um me Liv, and, and diane actually got together and did do you remember doing hot seat at Liv's apartment oh my gosh that's yeah. right wow and so we we sat and we did like you know, you, you hot seat is where you like sit in character, and um, the other guys would like ask you questions, and it's either you can either answer from from what's actually in the script, or you you come up with stuff kind of instinctively from your work that means that you have a really detailed, connected backstory. Um, that was for all the other actors, not for the people listening. You guys really need to work on on that. Um, <laughs> 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 but yeah it was good it was good it was worth it i forgot about that that's right that that apartment wow. in sea point and i think we were still finding the spines of our characters and i think we were all quite nervous at that point so you know to circle back to what dean said earlier like to think about that moment where we were playing improv games to try to, mm. you know, create our characters as quickly and as fully as possible to coming back season two, where I think all of us just slid into our skins um, so much more easily. But also, Do like, in terms, of how, line, oh, sorry. in terms of storyline, like, Liv, you were given, like, so much backstory and, and kind of your character in season two is kind of get, like they want something she really wants something in a way that I think you were trying to find for yourself as an actor in season one I mean I don't want to put words in your mouth but, but it, that's what it no, felt like I, I, I know exactly what you're saying and I don't know if you guys all felt the same way because I feel like a lot of us got so much more in terms of an origin story um I feel like they spent so much of season one setting up the world and setting up, um, you know, Assam's character as the as the newbie to town. And I feel like in season two, the writers gave so many, uh, so many more layers and, um, um, you know, moments of backstory to 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 understand some different colors. Um, and I certainly felt like that was the case with Atoy, with finally finding out that, you know, her her mask, her um, um, her stoicism is very much a response to trauma. Now, I don't know how you guys felt about your your characters. I think going into season one, I don't know about anyone else, but there was that sense of pressure about knowing, you know, where this story or this concept was birthed, mm. and the people involved, and and there was this, especially for us Asian actors, not necessarily getting these opportunities like this to, to tell a story and be the center of it in a way. And and what Joanna was saying, like doing that hot seat exercise about finding character, it was just 
it, for me, it was birthed out of sheer fear of like, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel all this, you know, um, excitement and pressure and not knowing who the character is and, and not wanting to let anyone down. And I feel like watching season two and being able to watch it with someone who wasn't a part of it. Watching Manny watch the show, I'm going to bounce off of other people, but what Dean was saying, the relationships between, I feel like every actor has a partner in a sense in the show, you know, mm. with young June and, and Assam and, and um, me and Joe, but everyone's relationships really like leveled out. And, and I thought it was hilarious watching picking up because I didn't notice it in season two, like Big Bill and Officer Lee. I just feel like the banter back and forth or everything just seemed easier season two. And I think it's that trust that was built between the creatives and the actors. And mm. I don't know. Settled in, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's all of that, you know. It's it's I think it's all part of the the work. I, no matter where you are as an actor or a director or whatever writer, I think, you know, when you the first season of any series, I think no matter how good you are, you know, how how prepared you are, you never feel like you're you're gonna know the character. I think it's just the nature of it, you know. And I think it's a good thing because it 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 uh, it it motivates us, you know, like, like you were saying, Diane, you know, and it, it makes you, it makes you not take the work for granted, but I think it's a, it's a nat for me anyway, it's a natural part of it. Uh, and sometimes you remind yourself, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, you don't want to be complacent and say, oh, it's the first season. It's okay to, uh, to you know, to not know what you're doing, mm -hmm. but, but for sure, you know, second season rolls around, everyone is, is a lot more comfortable in the character. It just, I think it's just the nature of, of the, of the journey. You know, I was I, absolutely I, I was quite humbled you know first season I was quite scared I, I was I was pretty afraid because I'd done like spots before and shows but it was my first like regular you know and the fact that you know it was honoring uh Bruce's legacy as well you know I, I felt I felt the kind of pressure that and it's because you want to do a good job you know and that's what it is you just want to do a good job but um did you feel experience, that you know? kind of, um, Did you feel that pressure ease up thinking about Bruce Lee in this? Did you find yourself? I think so. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A, bit? a little bit. Yeah, it was surreal. You know what I mean? It was surreal. I can remember it was <laughs> it was a Thursday when it came across my desk, and I was in LA at the time due to travel back to uh, to, to England over the weekend, and then this this thing came in, you know, worry, and I was going to be seen in London, you know, the Wednesday after. I was just, it's not that. You don't get it that much when you see a character. You just you think now, balls to bone, I can do this. You know, I I, I just I, I've, I've got to do this. I've got to give. It, I've got to do it. You know, and it, I don't know from that point in, I just wanted it so bad, but that put an enormous amount of pressure on me. But when I got there, it kind of it, it seemed to alleviate because everyone was just so great, and I felt like that everyone kind of banded together that much because it was something so fantastic and it was something you know it, it was about Bruce Lee and there's not one of us that doesn't know who Bruce Lee is you know mm. so for me I, I think that that, that kind of helped. I feel like everyone has a really interesting story too in terms of how they came to this project like Dean I remember hearing a story I think through Jonathan Tropper our showrunner that the moment he knew you were Leary was just this moment apparently where you had like a, a, a poor boy cap on I had a black cap on. I didn't want to take it off. <laughs> I was, well, you know, I, I you can take that cap. It got you the role. Well, yeah. this is what I'm talking about. You know, as actors, you know, we go, we try to get the job, and you know, you know, nine times out of ten, you know, you kind of come out thinking you could have done something a little bit different. I always do, but I've got to say this. You know, when I went in there, you know, I separate myself. I was so dialed in and focused, but this flat cap was staying on, man. I mean, I was just the guy. I, I had this flat cap on, man, like it was my sword. And sure enough, at the end, um, nice. the casting director asked me to take it off. And I just, there were a couple <laughs> of seconds of no. me being reluctant. <laughs> I just kind of, <laughs> and it was that one thing. <laughs> they said, did you see that? Did you see him? Did you see that? That's the guy. I would <laughs> love to see that. Did, 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 you, keep, said no. did you keep it on? Said no. Or you said no or no? Well, I kind of like, kind of said no to the guy. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 hilarious. It's just like so a little like, you know, you know, you know I would take so it off. It's hilarious. <laughs> and then That's Jake, hilarious. You has, you had an interesting one too, because Justin Lin like hunted you down, right? 
Sorry, so me, me? Yeah, yeah. Didn't like oh, you, you have a? I don't, I don't know if he hunted me down, but um, what, what happened was I think it was mid two thousand seventeen. I get a, a I get a, a an email or a call for an audition, and I actually read for a song. Wow. <laughs> And wow. I think I think yeah, every, I think everyone and their mother read for Assam, right? And I remember I remember uh, you know reading for it, and um, and I'm like, oh man, this is you know this is this is the the role that that Bruce Lee wanted you know was going to play. So of course, like in between every take of my audition, I was like doing dips and push ups and trying to look like you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember I sent it in, and and I thought that I had done a decent job as Assam, but I just knew in my heart that that I wasn't the right archetype or the right, or it just wasn't the right time for me or whatever. Um, but then at the same time, I had this, you know, a really profound feeling that I bet you, I bet you there's another role in this show that I would just be absolutely perfect for. And of course, I didn't hear it from anyone for like four months. <laughs> and I just totally <laughs> forgot about the, totally forgot about the project. And then I think uh, literally like a few, maybe two weeks before um, we all flew to Cape Town, I get another call. And this time it's from Justin Lin. And apparently, um, I guess they'd come down to the wire and they were like trying to figure out who was going to play Young June. And then you know, um, they had presented, you know, Justin Lin with a, a bunch of actors. And he said, oh, where's Jason Tobin? And, um, and they're like, oh, we read him for a song. He was no good. <laughs> <laughs> or something, something like that. He said that. He didn't he, say no, that. Just, he, he just, no, Justin, we just we couldn't do that to you. And he goes, no, 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 no. You need to read him for Young June. So of course, you know, they contacted me and they said, okay, we want you to read for Young June. And then uh, Justin Lin called me and said, look, dude, please just play him chill, okay? Don't go crazy. I spoke to Jonathan Tropper and he said the same thing. He's like, well, yeah, yeah, you know, just don't don't go crazy with him. And Alexa Fogel, same thing. She's like, don't go crazy. Just, you know, keep it, you know, keep it real. So, of course, you know, I read the, the, the sides of Young June. I'm thinking, this guy's not chill. <laughs> guy, what are you guys talking about? But, you know, being the professional that I am, I was like, you know what? I'll take on board all their notes. And I, I sent in a self-tape. And it's, it's really funny now to watch because I played Young June. And it, I played the, the scene, do you remember um, in season one when Assam comes back from prison and Young Jun's just going wild and stuff? So I played that whole scene, chill. And I literally looked like, like Marlon Brando from The Godfather, just like, hey, how was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like doggy doo doo, you know, whatever it was, you know? And, uh, and I still have that audition. I will show it to you guys one day because it's, it's freaking hilarious. And so I sent it in and I, I went home and I sat in my kitchen and I was just totally dejected. And I remember thinking, I do not know what the hell I am doing. My, my wife walks in, she goes, what are you doing? Why are you sitting in the dark in the kitchen? I'm like, man, I just suck. I don't know what the hell I'm doing as an actor, blah, blah, blah. You know, just going through all these self, this self-doubt. And then sure enough, uh, a few hours later, Jonathan Tropper um, calls me and says no 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 we need to see the energy of this character I'm like well duh of course you do <laughs> and so basically at that point I threw out every single note that that anyone had given me and all I did was I all I could hear was Bruce Lee's voice which was you know um, to honestly express yourself express yourself honestly and do that and so I said okay well you know I'll play Young June the way I want to play Young June and if I'm so lucky and fortunate enough to play this character for the next you know how many years then I better do it in a way that I enjoy it that you know and uh I think I did like one or two takes and I just I just went for it and basically you know the young June that you see in the show is the young June that I did in that audition in and then uh I think within an hour we were already talking about contracts and uh and then two weeks later I was on a flight to Cape Town it was uh, wow. it was it was it was it was awesome what a beautiful wow. story, man. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's, that's <laughs> great acting advice in general. Just like play the character how you right. would enjoy playing it if you do yeah. the season. Like if the show gets right. picked up for seven years, like you got to make it fun yeah. for you. Yeah, exactly. That's if exactly. I played it the other way, I'd just be, I'd be miserable, you know? So, mm -hmm. 
but yes yeah, so, so lucky and, and you know going on to like season two what's been so enjoyable is that I got to express myself so much as young June in, in, in season one in a certain way. And now season two, you know, uh, I feel like, you know, going, going back to what everyone's talked about, Liv, you talked about it, about, you know, getting deeper. Um, and, um, and now we're seeing a different color and a different shade to, to young June. And it's just so enjoyable to play. I and love then, uh, watching your relationship with Andrew so much uh, in season. It was so enjoyable. I, I, man, I have to say, I we had a great time working together, and um, not so much with Chen. Um, he was <laughs> a bit annoying. No, nobody at likes first, working with you me. Know? <laughs> I had to like turn around hurt. and go, Chen. No, you know what's funny is actually that in many ways, like how the uh, reality mirrors art as well, right? Because like yeah. when Chen rocked up, I'm like, oh, this guy's pretty good. Okay. Oh, his martial arts is pretty good too. <laughs> a lot of funny lines. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so I was <laughs> working crazy. <laughs> yeah, is that why you try to throw me in all our takes? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I swear, by the end of it, we knew. I think Jason and I. We. I think we were end up. We were one of the few people that stayed in Cape Town City proper. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, oh, like, that's, yeah. right there on Long Street, bro. <laughs> like, and and I remember yeah. that was like probably second week I was there, and um, <laughs> I remember I knew we had the relationship because we yeah. were, it was just so doubted right at the beginning. And you sometimes you just yes. got chemistry. Yeah. I remember we were it was like middle of the night, Cape yes. Town, like two a.m. exactly, two a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and we're yeah. just walking back home to our place. And we're just walking mm -hmm. down the street in the middle of the street, and it's empty. Yeah, and yeah, we're like. This is Hong and Young Jun right here. <laughs> the exactly. Down the street. exactly. And it was yeah. just a blast, man. By the time by the time we got mm -hmm. to the episode six, Dustin's episode. Yeah. You can you guys gonna you can attest, man. We were having just a blast. Like there were so many there were some takes that we made it in the final thing, which just like just came off the cuff, you know. Yeah. And, Actually, speaking of which. I, I feel like by the time we got to that to that particular episode, I was like, all right, you know, it's the end of the season, it's the last one. I'm going to improvise a lot. <laughs> I'm just going to just, I want to play, you know what? What are they going to do? It's it's the yeah. end now, you know? So Because you, you, know, you, you know you know your character, you know your life, you know uh, yeah. our life, you know? And yeah. I mean, and, and there were sometimes like, like reality would lead into the, the story. And I was just like, yeah, you have to use it, you know, and it's beautiful to use because mm. I remember there's some takes when we were sitting around the picnic table, uh, the, the, the lunch table in the story, uh, you know, during the fight mm -hmm. that I'm just looking at Koji. I'm like, all I'm going to do right now is just try to try to get this guy to crack a smile, man. He's so serious. Like, <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm yeah. thinking that as, yeah. as oh, home, Koji, you know? really? Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> but I it was it was it was just fun. It was just fun. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I think a lot of it, you know, some of it for me too was just it's the last episode, and yeah. and uh, with with you with you guys, I didn't feel like I have to do anything. I just gotta just leave the camera on, right? And uh, and uh, and just trust that whatever you you know you do, you know, I would leave the camera running, you know, after the scene is over or the take is over, and sometimes you know, uh, oh, you, you know. You, you should cut. I said, no, 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 just let, you know, just leave it a little bit and let it go and, and see, you know, and everyone's like, oh, we're rushing, we're rushing. And, but those are the times, you know, like I said, with you, with you guys and with the three of you and, and Maria too, but the three of you is so comfortable with each other. You know, you don't, you don't have to direct. You just leave the camera on. I was Dustin, going I was ask you, Dustin, I was going to ask you, was it like for you, like, um, like a creative crossover, you know? You know, what was that like as well? Like, you know, acting and then like directing. Because I know we were so heavy loaded around like double banking and whatnot. But then for you to like go into like, uh, you know, like, what was that like? Would you? It's the, it's the best time of my life, man. Seriously. I mean, I've, it wasn't the first time I directed. It was the first time I directed episodic TV, but it was the best time of my life. It's, every day was crazy pacing because by, you know, you guys remember this, uh, Jason. I mean, I was just... Mm. You know, I was like, come on, come on, you know, it, it, we were just running out of time, we were just everything going on, but, but it was all in a good way, you know, and, and, uh, and everybody was really tired. I knew, I knew, you know, Andrew's dead tired, Jason, everybody's tired, 
the crew is dead tired. The stunt guys are just pretty much done. You know, they're shot. Yeah. And you, you guys remember, right, Chan? I mean, the fights, we were seeing the fights for the first time, right? Yeah. Previously, every episode, you get a previs and you got the this and that, and you get time to rehearse but because we were double banking. You know, none of you guys had any time to even rehearse the fights, you know, and Jason, no, Jason and, I think we, we, we had to learn a fight there, like on there, the fly for one there day. There was one, there was one <laughs> time we, were, we, we had to cut out a lot and it was like, all right, and like, we're just going to do this, this and this. We didn't even rehearse it. And it was like straight up one take. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, I would and just, we, and we, you know, yeah. I would just like, you know, I was having bread because there was no previous anything. So we were like, okay, you know, put the camera here, put the camera here. And, uh, and let's go, you know, I have a feeling they're going to get it. You know, let's not even rehearse it. Let's just shoot it. We get lucky. <laughs> so many times, the first take, we would get it. I got a feeling. I, I, of course, I had the I feeling. I got a feeling. You had the feeling. I didn't have the feeling. I was okay. like, I, 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 don't, I ain't going to. I'm going to, I'm going to be the one that messes this one up. Cause, then, cause, <laughs> I, cause no, like, I was like, this. I mean, you can ask, I was just sitting in the front of the camera. Go, oh, please God, make, you know, get lucky, get lucky. And then, Boom, the first take would just like be perfect, you know, and then you don't dare do any more because you don't want anybody to get hurt. And, uh, and of course, you got to do a second take for, for for protection. But but that I think, you know, we rarely we rarely did more than three takes on any of those action stuff. And, yeah. and you guys are just yeah. doing it for the first time. Andrew is seeing the choreography for the first time. But but I got to say, I got to give credits to the, the, the stunt team, the, the stunt yeah. the fighters. Yeah. So that they just they just roll with it, you know, and everybody was just working together, and uh, and it was, it was just awesome, Dean. It was like every day was just a mad mad rush. But I get home, man, I'm like on this high, you know, just like, oh man, today was awesome, you know. And I remember like no. the, the sun was going down. We weren't sure we we're going to get it, and then we we rush, but now we got it. You know, it's like it's that euphoria you feel, you know. I thought we were awesome. Congratulations, man. Massive scene. And I kept telling you guys, come on, come on. I was got to keep rushing everybody, and everybody hated me at the moment, but we made the day. <laughs> by, by the way, by the way, not only did Dustin act and then direct on Warrior, but right before he directed, he like tore his ACL in a yeah. fight scene. Oh, I heard that, yeah. Joe, so like you're doing all of that with like a busted knee and you're like, nah, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to wait to the end of the season before I get it fixed. So man, on, the, on your episode where you were directing, anytime you stood up and ran towards, I'm like, dude, stop <laughs> that, you're yeah. making me nervous. I actually okay? forgot that I had a torn ACL because I was so into it. And then once in a while I, I would, you know, I would uh, uh, walk a little too fast or go down the stairs a little too fast. And I was like, oh, I got a torn ACL. <laughs> I, I think there was one time where you like sort of leapt off something. And then both, I think me, Jason, yes. and Koji yes. were all like, <gasps> slow down, Dustin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, cause, you know, you get so excited when you see a good take, you know, and I, I hate to sit in the mon in front of the monitor. So I'm always running back and forth, talking to the actors. And, and you forget, you know, you forget you got a torn ACL. And, you know, I'll hop out of the <laughs> forget you have a torn AC. It's so crazy, and, Dustin, because like I had like a painting teacher in Paris who was just too tired and hungover. And so he went through the museum in a wheelchair and he had this like beautiful girl pushing him around um, um, <laughs> museum in Paris. And yet you're like on set in South Africa with a legit injury. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, yeah, actually, jumping in. Angela, Angela actually had a, a, a wheelchair for me. And, uh, and, and, and somebody was going to push me around. I said, oh, don't be ridiculous. First of all, Zing would never sit in a wheelchair. And, <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, I, yeah, Zing Zing would honestly, his own leg off, yeah. Honestly, Dustin, <laughs> I feel like because they shot, I don't know if everyone, yeah, what Chen was saying, they shot episode six at the very tail end of the season. Everyone was basically gone, or most of us mm -hmm. at least. But I remember, I don't know the pressure you felt, Dustin, but it was incredible to watch from like episode two or maybe even one when you knew you had to direct six, I just remember you carrying binders around everywhere you went from our table reads to rehearsals with other actors, to your fittings, to your stunt rehearsals and being zing and actually working to like showing us actors your, your pitch for, you know, set design. And you were so inspired and motivated as a director. It was so, incredible to see like the months and months and months you put into this and then yes the knee injury but 
you did such an amazing job, Dustin. Like you should be. No, so it, it, it was it was the time of my life. It really, it really, uh, it really. Beautiful stuck. episode. You, did you, did, feel- did you, I think, tore your ACL during a fight scene with Joe, where he had also torn his, and you. I have no idea did how you, you two managed to carry off that fight scene because the fight scene itself was incredible. Yeah. But both Bill and I had to run up the stairs with guns, and we actually couldn't get up the stairs quick enough. And we had perfectly functioning. <laughs> <else. laughs> well, you know, we, like we were, you know, I, I think most of us have, have some kind of injury. You know, you, if you're a martial artist for, for 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 years, and of course, Joel's been struggling with this ACL, and and I know when when he was shooting uh, Danny's episode. That big massive uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, scene. Uh, one of the day he came back. Oh man, I, you know today it, I tweaked it again today. So um, oh. he's constantly struggling, struggling with it. So when when we were fighting, you know, it it, it would just we just have so much fun beating each other up for like two days, and and then uh, you don't think about it, you know. And then of course when it when it happens, luckily for luckily for for all of us and for me, you know it. I tore my mind like I think there was like six moves left in the in the fight, and I wasn't trying to be a hero or anything. But I was like, God, we've been we've been working so hard on this thing for two days, and you know I got to finish it. So, but I think had it happened on the first day, I would have been really bummed <laughs> because we we worked really hard in that fight scene, and if if I had to double that, I would have been really bummed. It was yeah. so good. It was such a good. So to be honest, as you said, the stunts in the season were absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. Brett and Johnny and all of the boys, they just do such a good oh, I was I telling like earlier the fact that we all would go to stunts and like, oh, yes, even yes. though Penny didn't really get to do anything until You're the up. second season tuned in. <laughs> um, but uh, it was it was like a cool bonding thing at like six in the morning, we would all go and like do squats together and. I think that kind of was like maybe one of the, the main things like broke the ice really quickly because we were like instantly like just like oh you're sweaty too give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the like I have I told Brett uh, when I chatted with him after the season and and again after I saw the whole season for the screeners, I am always on the bit like fighting the good fight for, because I really believe that um, stunt people deserve an Oscar. And Absolutely. it's a crime yes. that they do totally. not have one. And, I, I'm, and I'm yes. really, and I was like talking to JT and I was like, hey man, like we gotta really make a push for like some kind of like Emmy love for this stunt team. Because I honestly, and I, I, okay, fine, I'm biased because I'm the show, but I don't care because I'm, I'm very real. You know, like I wanna, <laughs> I, I think our, our, I think our stunts on this show, man, Stack it up against anything out on TV anytime right now. Yeah, yeah and in yeah. general, totally. it's, it's totally. incredibly done. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. also, yeah. I, I mean, everybody worked, them. the crew is amazing in South Africa, but I mean, what about what about girls? Uh, I think mostly it was women in makeup and hair. Huh? Oh yeah. my God. The amount of work they had to do with the double banging, mm-hmm. yeah. the amount of scars and wigs and disguises they had to do yeah. with everybody. Where, continuity it was everything was all out shooting out of continuity i mean that's a that's a massive massive undertaking yeah, yeah. And like, I, I don't, I really i'm not going to give any spoilers away but like ben was like oh this face mm. oh like, uh-huh, yeah uh-huh and, uh, wow I've, I've been i've been saying i think by the time this airs this will be well we're already on uh what episode six or seven already it's coming seven. out seven, this friday yeah. seven yeah, yeah. Referencing next week's episode so, so by next week it'll be yeah it'll be okay yeah. i think <laughs> yeah I, I i i've been saying like in some interviews that i i call our show like the little show that could like we are small but mighty because I mean, like, look how small, like that, uh, you talk about hair and makeup, look how small our crew was on that, mm-hmm. but they just handled it. It was incredible. Yeah, and I have, yeah. and you know, cause I had just come from like this big feature film just before this, just for getting to South Africa. And I would, I mean, the, 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 the amount of detail and the amount of specificity and creativity on our show rivaled that. And it was, in, it was incredible to see. 
is what happens when you have like they say it like this, this was a you know a labor of love for everybody involved and i think you know when people that are seeing this hearing this you can hear in our voices how we talk about it you know is from the, yeah top down well, your crew must have been small, but the show looks enormous. It's a very huge undertaking. Dustin, kudos, man. I saw the screeners for season two. Wow. You know, wow to so many things. Phenomenal. The, the show looks like there's a thousand people working behind the scenes to, to make it as wonderful as it is. Like I said, I'm with you guys. I want this to go to season three and four. And, you know, uh, we just got to get it out there as much as we can and push it. Yep. Um, we're going to yep. we're going to get this going. So with that said, it's Thanksgiving Eve and tomorrow people around the country and around the world are going to sit around their tables together and they should only say one thing. They should say warrior Friday night. That's all they should say. <laughs> <laughs> Friday night. Forget family. Forget forget, e- forget everything else. <laughs> Turkey, whatever, mashed potatoes, who cares? <laughs> They've seen each other. They've been in lockdown for a year. Forget it. They need to all sit down, watch Warrior. Forget about all that other stuff, okay? <laughs> But anyways, I want you guys to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving before we head out from a, such an amazing show today. This is so beautiful. The stories, like Dustin said, he left the cameras on and you guys did your work. I just sat here and you guys did my job. So thank you so much. You guys are so wonderful because I know we can go for five more hours. So one at a time, if you guys could share something to everyone in this world during Thanksgiving and a warrior wish. I'll go first. Uh, uh, uh. I want to thank all the fans. I'm, I'm very thankful for that, honestly, uh, not just because we're doing a Thanksgiving plug, but I'm also very thankful for, for the opportunity to, to, to meet and work with everybody here. And uh, so this Thanksgiving, I, ju I just wish everyone uh, all over the world um, just some, some peace and love and, and just, I know it's a difficult time, but I think we have to stay thankful. And if we stay thankful and we send that, that vibration now, it's gonna, it's gonna overcome everything that's going on right now. And, and that's all I need to say, happy Thanksgiving. It should be, it should be Thanksgiving every day, actually. So, I think I might get mine out of the way right now before it starts getting really, really crazy. <laughs> Because that was really bro. <laughs> I'm calling next, I'm calling next. <laughs> I'm going now, I'm going now. Um, <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, guys. I uh, hope that you all stay safe and keep well. You know, it's, 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 it's not an easy time for, for, for anyone. Um, I'm truly grateful to my castmates, um, to my friends on the production that are now family. You know, this has meant a great deal to me, a great deal to me. And I'll say this with confidence, the best is yet to come. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um. To all the amazing Warrior fans, we love you so much. Thank you so much for your support and your love. Happy Thanksgiving, and I wish you guys healthy, positive, and loving energy. Happy Thanksgiving. This is my first Thanksgiving. And I am, I'm just so, I'm just so thankful for you guys. And I'm talking to you guys. I'm not talking to the fans anymore. I'm talking to you guys. I miss you. I'm glad to you more. <laughs> We love you, Tom. Love you, Tom. Love you, love you too, Tom. Tom. <laughs> the Brit. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm also, I'm also British. So I'll, I'll come in here and say thank you for Thanksgiving. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting, interesting holiday that I hope everyone is reflecting on with, you know, um, what it really means and what it could mean and what it what it might mean for the future. And um, I'm thankful for all the fans of the show watching the show and for the love of the show. And also just for you guys, I honestly like I miss hanging out and this has been so fun. And can we do it again? And um, we won't have to censor the massage story. We can just relive it in our own homes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Um, thank you so much for all the comments and all the love and the posts. And, you know, we see everything from fan art to articles. So I just want to thank you for accepting our little 
warrior baby and uh, we have a month <laughs> more of episodes and then to my cast I just want to thank you all for the two years worth of memories that you have given me I mean I miss you all you know I love you all and I, I cherish our relationship so thanks guys happy Thanksgiving <laughs> all right all right I'll, I'll go here I just want to say um Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for your love and support. And um, uh, this, I know that, you know, 2020 has been a tough year for everybody. And, um, but thank goodness we can be grateful for Warrior. And <laughs> so tune in <laughs> and, uh, and make sure you sign that petition. And I'll be even more thankful and you'll be more grateful. And <laughs> we're going to make 2021 the straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to 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 um, segue off Jason, I am thankful that after our run on Cinemax, that uh, we are moving to HBO Max. Um, yeah, I'm thankful for that because I'm thankful that um, <laughs> our fans have been awesome, like so many of you guys have said, and you know, sending everyone out there so much love and so much gratitude from all of us. And I want to thank everyone on this panel and Galaxy and Alyssa, I know you're listening, who's helped to organize this. And um, I want to thank the cast for putting up with me, bringing up weird massage stories that really went nowhere <laughs> today. You guys, thank you. Galaxy has promised to bring us on again, so we'll have plenty of time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So that's, uh, I think that's a wonderful message from everyone. I think we got everyone in there, right? We got, I think, uh, mm -hmm. we're not missing anyone, but, uh, you know, for those out there that don't celebrate Thanksgiving or it's not in your country or whatever, just, it's a time of giving thanks to, you know, however, and to whoever, and to your loved ones. And I call this Thanksgiving from Comic-Con radio and to the world out there, a very wonderful warrior Thanksgiving. So let's say it at that. Uh -oh. And guys, ready? Three, two, one. Let's blow kisses to the entire universe. Ready? Three, two, one. Mwah. Yeah. Thank, you, Galaxy. Thank you, Galaxy. Thank you, Galaxy. Love you guys. Thank, Thank you so much, everybody. Just, just a fist.